welcome and thanks again for watching because without you this really means nothing so thanks yesterday we were talking about this newspaper and we were reading this letter of Manson that he wrote to this newspaper well there was some more stuff in the newspaper that I thought I'd show you since we got it out um, Manson in this letter it opens up a lot of things for me in it not one time does he ever mention drugs not one time never he doesn't mention drugs ever so the people that have the drug theory I don't really go for that the people that believe in the the race theory I don't really go for that either and the people that go for the the let's get Bobby out of jail I don't really go for that either this rumor of Elvis it came out in the first very first newspaper when this guy got when when this guy got the letter from Manson did Manson actually create this rumor of Elvis being a bisexual or was that out before Manson never sent that letter because in that letter it sounds like that uh, Manson's trying to explain now wait a minute now Bill I'm not the one that said man, uh, Elvis was bisexual and it goes Manson was in the very first paper as you can see here um, and he goes on like I say he goes on to talk about a lot of things in there most of it's sex most of it's dirty sex sometimes he even talks about sex with animals and kids and things like that uh, he's talking more Harvey Weinstein, that Jeffrey Epstein shit, than he's talking, you know, any kind of drug shit. And the people that try to connect the drugs up with Manson, they all try to connect the mob up with Manson, and the mob and the drugs didn't really mix. But sex in the mob, I don't know. Um, this guy just had a lot of stuff in this newspaper. It's, it, it makes me wonder if Manson was, if Manson was mad and he wanted to send somebody to that Tate house, it's always, it always ends up people were like, it's because of drugs. Well, if Manson was mad and he was pissed off because people were having sex with kids and animals and things like that, uh, that might send it in a different direction for Manson to think, okay, go there. Them people were dirty assholes. Go so I don't know just that letter just opens up a lot for me you know the whole newspaper does actually even though it's just so called a bunch of gossip like the guy says in here like Dakota says in here you know this thing isn't all gossip if it was all gossip I'd have been sued a hundred times by now and nobody's ever sued him so that says something as well um, Elvis Presley, they talk about drugs and the drug theory and how drugs were around bad. Well, even Dakota goes into that about how Elvis was addicted in 1969. So there was drug dealers out pushing drugs, maybe to these sex organizations. Who knows? Is there another theory now where Manson could have maybe sex orgies, dirty sex parties in Hollywood? The Weinstein shit, the Epstein shit going on back then that Manson was like ahead of, you know. He liked sex, but he didn't like that kind of sex sort of thing. But then again, he had a bunch of young girls on his own place. So, who knows? Did he involve himself in that stuff? And then he was just ratting on them later. You know, there's all kinds of stuff in this newspaper that, uh, you know, it's just intriguing to my mind. And I'm glad I could share it with you. And what do you think about the newspaper? You know, it goes on to say some other things in here and some ar other articles that are passing by as you listen to me talk. Um, at the very end of this video, there's even an article about, uh, uh, what's his name, Rudy, Rudy Altabelli. Rudy Altabelli, the um, guy that owned the Tate House. It's like, this dude was living in the Tate House even with blood still there. He didn't even care. He just didn't even clean it up. He just still lived there. That's some creepy shit to me. So there's some, you know, even as creepy as I am, I don't know if I could have done that shit. And then there's other things in this newspaper that people might not have known until this information came out in the 80s. Like the map that they drew of the house, you know? I don't know if anybody ever knew that this uh, parent kid was stabbed 
too, not only was he shot, he was also stabbed. And then his car crashed into the gate and pulled out. So they stabbed this guy first, and he crashed. They shoot the guy first, and then they stabbed him later, you know? There's a lot of things that I don't know if you can even read that in Helter Skelter. Basically, I thought he was shot for the longest time until I seen this thing, you know? And then it's like, wow, he wasn't actually shot. He was stabbed, too. So... There's whole kinds of questions that are opened up when you get to see different information. And again, I'm just glad to show it to you. And here's another thing that always boggled my mind. They stabbed the hell out of Sharon Tate. I mean, they stabbed her. And, and when I watch these other crime shows and they say, oh, somebody was stabbed 19 times. It's usually like passion, you know, a, 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 a crime of passion, a crime of love, a crime of jealousy where somebody's like right in their face, you know? And this lady got stabbed in the tits, all over the tits. What does that have, you know? Does that mean anything? Because they were right in her face, stabbing her right in the chest. Um, does that have anything sexual to do with it? Was Tex pissed off because maybe she shunned this dude, didn't think he was cute, didn't want to have sex with him, whatever made a joke about him he couldn't get it up what you know it just opens up so many more questions to me and not about drugs not about drugs being in that house but about other things that might have been in that house that maybe even if it was a big case like you know this Weinstein and this Epstein thing is nowadays Epstein was like a fall guy he got the blame so he's like a Manson. He gets all the blame for everything. But then all this dirty shit goes away. All these other people that are in pictures and shit and were, you know, on his island, in his house, all over the place, you know, they get to skate. Sort of the same thing. That's what I think about this. I don't know. I don't, th I, I'm not saying that I think it was a big drug orgy, you know, and they went there for, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But this is way more intriguing about sexual deviance than it would be drug addicts and it's kind of amazing to me that they let it you know this newspaper had this all this corner information about her and it actually it was just interesting I guess at the time it's been interesting ever since it happened and it's interesting now that's probably the reason we're even looking at it now or I could get people to look at it by posting it on YouTube. Here it says Polanski was trying to get back in the United States or Canada. He even says, well, that he said, well, that's bullshit, but basically Jack Nicholson went to Paris to talk to Polanski about his trial for, you know, the delinquency of a minor charge that he had here in the United States that he still has here in the United States that he's never came back to settle. Then, um, it, it, you know, it goes on to more little articles about, again, the Sinatra and Manson thing is in, uh, back in here. He talks about that a lot. He was probably, you know, probably excited that Sinatra probably even called him on the phone in the first place. But, you know, that, again, that makes me think, too. Like he says at the bottom of this little piece, it's like, if Frank is so protective of his family, where was he when they were partying with Manson? You know? Like he said, really, just saying. So what was really going on in Hollywood? Do we really know? Do we really know what's going on there now? You know, we hear all these rumors. Here it is. Polanski's back over in, in, in 1980 and he's dating another 17-year-old girl. So that leads again. This is proof. I mean, this guy has proof or he'd have been sued for that again. Um, it's proof that this dude, you like young people. And it leads back to Manson's letter, all talking about a bunch of sex and a bunch of orgy and a bunch of deviant motherfuckers rather than a bunch of drug users. So, I don't know. The drug theory, I'm not ragging on anybody. I'm just saying it don't fit to me. It just don't fit. And, and, and sex and murder, they go along just as well as drugs and murder do. You know, sex and murder go along probably more with murder than anything does. So... Why did they go to this house? And if Manson did send them there, was it something to do with sex rather than something to do with drugs? We'll never know. But anyway, it was nice showing you this paper. And it was nice that people now have a chance to take a look at it. And this is another interesting thing. Did you know 
that the police department not only took pictures of the dead people, but they have them on video. They have a video of that haunted house of horror somewhere. Did they ever get rid of that? Is it gone? Is it still at the police department? Where's that video at where they're walking around filming these dead people? And this, where this uh, Rudy Altabelli just lives in this house with the blood all over the walls. Come on, man. There's some way more creepy people in Hollywood than Charles Manson was. I mean, he was the least of it. But anyway, again, thanks for watching. And as always, peace.